The first element of developing an exam consists of our course objectives. Our goal is to determine student mastery of course objectives, thus we must align all our exam questions to those objectives. My suggestion is to simply create a list of course objectives. Then we will fill in exam questions for each objective as we go along. The second element of building a summative assessment consists of aligning the course objectives with the appropriate levels of Bloom's revised taxonomy. This ensures that students are using a variety of cognitive skills. For the midterm and final exams, we can loosely translate Bloom's levels into types of test questions. Objective questions, such as multiple choice and fill in the blank, typically require lower order thinking skills or LOTS. These include basic recall and comprehension of definitions, along with application of course concepts. Subjective questions, such as short answer and essay questions, typically require higher order thinking skills or HOTS, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. For Grantham courses, we emphasize the LOTS in our 100 and 200 level courses and the HOTS in our 300, 400, and Master's level courses. Thus, your test questions should represent these levels of Bloom's taxonomy. Having said that, a good exam does incorporate a variety of question types. Just be sure you include more objective questions for lower division courses and more subjective questions for higher division courses. Let's go back to your list of course objectives. Under each objective, I suggest adding space for each of the four types of questions, multiple choice, fill in the blank, short answer, and essay. Now we can select test questions. I suspect that you will be consulting the publisher's test bank for your questions. You can also revisit the learning objectives, usually found at the beginning of each chapter, to transform those statements into exam questions especially short answer and essay questions. The rule of thumb for developing the exam is to include approximately 30 objective questions and 15 subjective questions. So what does this rule of thumb mean? Let's look at the midterm exam. If you have four course objectives to be covered on the midterm, you might include four multiple choice, four fill in the blank, two short answer, and one essay question for each course objective. That's a total of 44 questions. On the final exam, you will cover all course objectives, but you may choose to offer more questions on the objectives that were introduced in weeks five through eight of the course, and fewer questions for the objectives that were previously included on the midterm exam. Again, the key is to use a variety of question types so that the student demonstrates mastery of course objectives. With approximately 30 objective and 15 subjective questions, the student will use all levels of the cognitive domain, and the exam will last about one to two hours, which is an appropriate length of time according to the Carnegie criteria. In the next installment of this series, we are going to explore how to create a summative assessment that takes the form of a final project.